Stephen Gilbo is Canada's Minister of the Environment and Climate Change. He is with me now. Uh, Minister, good to see you again. Thanks for taking time to speak with me. Good morning. Look, uh, we've all seen what's happening in British Columbia. Do you make a straight line connection between the changing climate and the storms that have been ravaging BC? Well, it's actually, from a scientific perspective, very difficult to link a specific uh, extreme weather event with, with climate change. What we do know is because of climate change, because of a warming planet, we are seeing and we will continue to see more and more of these extreme weather events. And that's certainly been the case in, in Canada and, and around the world uh, over the last few years. So in terms of dealing with the reality, I, I, we know the government has a plan to, uh, to green the economy, to accelerate mm -hmm. climate change uh, action. Uh, so we know about those pledges, uh, but what more will the government be uh, proposing to deal with the issue of adaptation and to fund the kinds of infrastructure changes needed mm -hmm. to deal with the climate events happening now? That's a very good point, Peter. And I think clearly for, uh, for a very long time, most Canadians thought that adapting to climate change is something that developing countries would have to do and small island states, but not really Canada. And, and, and clearly what we're seeing is that we need to adapt here as well, uh, for, certainly from an infrastructure perspective, um, uh, from a, an emergency preparedness perspective, from a health perspective. And in fact, Environment and Climate Change Canada is working to develop the first uh, national adaptation strategy. Uh, we we have started consultations with, with provinces, territories, uh, stakeholders, indigenous leadership, and we will continue to do that so that we can we can have this this national adaptation strategy up and running by roughly a year from now. Uh, successive governments have promised uh, emissions reductions targets that they they haven't been able to meet for the past 30 years. Y you say Canada is now on a path to achieve those more ambitious targets. What's changed? Well, the good news is that it's not the government that's saying that, but it's independent experts. A number of them have said when they've looked at our plan, when they've looked at the measures we proposed during the last election campaign, they said that Canada is on its way to meet to meet its target. What has changed is that, well, for, for a very long time, we kept having conversations and debate in Canada about targets and, you know, whose targets was bigger than whose. And, and, and never really about how do we get the job done? Like, like actually putting in place measures, a price on pollution, record level investment in public transit, in electrification of transportation, in funding uh, active transportation infrastructure, uh, putting in place new regulations to reduce the, the amount of methane emission, which is a very powerful greenhouse gas, which Canada already has in place. So, and, and billions of dollars of investment in, in, in the green economy. And that's really what what's starting to to have an impact in in climate change. When you when you project where emissions were going all the way to 2030, we've already reduced those 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 emissions to 2030 by roughly about what half of Quebecers emit every year. Mm. So our plan is working, but I'm the first one to say we need to do more. And during the last election campaign, we we committed to do a number of, of, of more aggressive measures because that's what Canadians told us. Go we ahead. want you to do better on climate change and we want you to do it faster. Let's talk next steps. What are next steps in your government's plan? What are the first, you know, uh, move forward now? Parliament's back. Uh, the government now gets a chance to try and implement the agenda it campaigned on that it's put before Canadians. So uh, what are we going to see first? What are the government's uh, next step plans to build back better and build back greener? Well, we will continue to deploy the, the tens of billions of dollars that, that, that have been announced and, and in some cases have already started being deployed. I was referring to transit, for example, 300 new transit projects under construction right now in Canada, a thousand more in, in the process of being of, of being approved. So Canadians are going to see from, from one side of the country to the other, a number of new transit projects. Um, we will be introducing new regulations early in 2022 um, that's called clean fuel standards. So basically we will, we will force um, the, the companies that produce liquid uh, liquid fuels mm -hmm. to, to, to make them cleaner and cleaner, either by investing in, in new technologies to, re to reduce the amount of pollution that that they make or blending with, with, 
with biofuels or investing more in, le- in electrification of transportation. So this is coming very early in, in 2022. Uh, we, uh, we will be starting in, in the very near future, a matter of weeks, consultation with provinces and territories and other stakeholders around the, the, the cap on oil and gas emissions that, that, that we promised during the last election campaign. We're the only large oil and gas producing nation in the world that has committed to, to doing that. Um, why, why do that? Mm. Well, it's 25% of our pollution mm. in Canada, but, but, so we but, need to, to, to do something about that. Let me ask you that. It, but isn't the real difference maker rolling back production, not capping emissions levels? Uh, doing that still encourages production. Well, not, not not necessarily, and and, and I mean, what we have to what we have to think and, and remember is that what is the atmosphere seeing? And if the atmosphere is seeing less pollution, then we're achieving our goal. And 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 and, and of course, we we need to think we need to be thinking about production of, of fossil fuels, but we also need to be thinking about consumption. So the the demand side of things, which is why I've been talking about public transit active transportation, electrification of our transportation system. And, and the more we're successful in doing that, the more we'll reduce our dependency to, to fossil fuel. In the other largest emitting sector in Canada, which is transportation, both these sectors, energy production and transportation, account for roughly half of our pollution in Canada. So if we can tackle these two sectors, we can make a serious difference in Canada when it comes to when it comes to climate change pollution. Right. Do, do you still make the case, as the Prime Minister has done, uh, that fossil Fossil fuel projects are still needed in this country uh, to help fund climate action. Uh, is, is that what you believe? I think what, what the Prime Minister has said is that every sector of our economy will need to be part of that transformation. So there, there, there isn't a plan where you know, the government will, will work with certain sectors but, but abandon others in, 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 in this transformation. And, and interestingly enough, if you look at a number, I was talking about biofuels earlier on, mm-hmm. uh, second generation ethanol, for example, m- making ethanol, which can be used in, in vehicles or other form of combustion from, uh, from, from waste in our garbage bags. Uh, there's a company in Edmonton doing that right now. And the skill sets that these people need are very similar to the skill sets that you would find in the oil and gas sector. So the, the, the plan is really to, to work with every sector of our economy, every region of, of of Canada to, to ensure that we embrace this transformation that is starting to happen in, in Canada already and, and around the world. Uh, you, you've also called for the phasing out of fossil fuel subsidies. The federal government uh, provided some mm-hmm. $18 billion in subsidies and other financial supports for the fossil fuel industry last year. Earlier this month, your government announced it will cut the subsidies to companies operating and expanding outside the country by the end of next year. So What's your timetable for phasing out entirely those subsidies to fossil fuel industries, and what's the reason for phasing them out now? Well, a number of of reasons. I mean, we can't hope to reduce pollution while at the same time give money to company to continue increasing their production of, of, of fossil fuel. That simply, that, there's no way we can, we, we can do that. Uh, G20 countries committed in 2009 to, to, to phasing out those fossil fuel subsidies by 2025. We've taken, uh, we've taken the commitment in Canada to do it two, two years earlier than our G20 partners. And we've already started reducing by more than $3 billion a year over the last two years, these these subsidies. So they are declining rapidly uh, in in Canada while we're increasing even more rapidly our investment in in, in, in clean technologies and and, and renewable energy uh, industry in Canada. So these things go hand in hand. As as our investment decline in fossil fuel subsidies, we will be be able to invest more and more in in clean technologies in Canada. All right, let's finish on this. Uh, I understand you'll be traveling the country in the new year by train uh, to hear from Canadians uh, about how to carry out the climate agenda. What are you expecting to hear? Well, I mean, we, we just came out of an election where where people told us they wanted to do to do better and faster when it comes to climate change. We have a number of very specific measures we want to hear Canadians on. I mean, we've, you and I have been talking about the, the cap on oil and gas emissions, uh, eliminating fossil fuel subsidies. So there are a number of things on, on which we would be very interested to hear what Canadians have to say in terms of not, not so much to target, because I, I think there is broad agreement on, on, on targets. But how do we do it? All right. Uh, Minister of Environment and Climate Change, uh, Stephen Gilbo. Always good to talk to you, Minister. Thanks for your time today. Thank you very much.